Welcome back from the break, everyone. While we were at Tokyo Game Show, we did so much that we can't actually put it all into one episode. So what we decided to do was make a top 10 list of all the best things we did at Tokyo Game Show, and we've called it the Top 10 Moments in TGS. Uh, have a look at what, look at it. If you, there's anything there that you'd like to see more of, jump onto our Facebook page. The link's right down at the bottom of your screen. And tell us what more you'd like to see, and we might put that into future episodes. Stay tuned. At number 10, Lightning Strikes Twice, it's Ryan playing Lightning Returns. At number 9, we didn't realise who he was at the time, it's Hideo Kojima. Uh, at number 8, with very comfortable seats, it's Vince playing Need for Speed Rivals. At number 7, in any colour you want, it's the Vita 2000. I don't know what I'm doing. At number 6, in any colour you want, as long as it's white, it's the Vita TV. Oh. Every card, USB, HDMI and Ethernet. At number 5, in a blur of noise and lights, it's the Sony boot. At number four, with a free deck of trading cards, it's the Square Enix shop. <laughs> At number three, combining World of Tanks with anime, it's the War Gaming boot. <laughs> At number two, how does controller? It's John failing at playing Killzone Shadowfall. Attack in L L one. Like that? Oh no, no. Oh, no, no. And the number one moment of Tokyo Game Show was the crew playing Titanfall. G'day everyone, John McLeish here. I'm down at Tokyo Game Show 2013. I'm joined by Abby on the couch today. She's the uh, community manager for Respawn Entertainment. G'day, Matt, how are you? I am having a great time. You having a great time? So we were just checking out uh, the new title over there, Titanfall, just before. Looks awesome, I absolutely love it. Um, it looks like, where, where does the developers draw their inspiration from? Oh, uh, I guess it would depend on what department you ask. Um, I know our artists take a lot of inspiration from 70s and 80s uh, sci-fi. Um, of course, there's some Japanese influence in the game as well. Uh, as you can tell, we've got the you know the Titans, which are mechs, um, and also, uh, oh man, I just like I it really it depends on who you ask. Um, but we started out sort of with these modern you know military exoskeletons, and eventually those grew uh, into uh, you know what is now the Titans in the game, uh, and then. I think if you look at it from a gameplay uh, in, and design standpoint, I think you can see the influence of some tribes with the way the wall running works, and you can pick up speed and momentum as you move around the maps. Mm -hmm. uh, some very 90s shooters, a uh, little bit of a uh, quake in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you picked up on that? Oh, no, absolutely. No, I'm a huge uh, Quake 3 player from back in the day. Awesome. Um, so I picked up on that definitely a lot. Uh, also, for me, it kind of felt a bit like a cross between uh, the free-to-play title Blacklight Retribution and Battlefield 2142 sort of a thing. Both big fans of those games as well. Uh, regarding the Titans themselves, though, uh, I saw some of the gameplay of people just using the Titans, and they don't feel chunky and slow like most mech games make them do. They feel just like you're ordinarily running around and stuff like that. How does that affect gameplay? Well, you know, it's funny uh, you say that because at very first we didn't really want to refer to them as mechs at all. It was sort of like, oh, giant robots, uh, because it has such a negative connotation in some people's minds because they think slow and clunky, and we really want it to be fast. You know, you really want to be able to play as the pilot and then, you know, quickly get into the in the Titan and still feel like you've got that, you know, great sense of control, just a little bit heavier, but they've got that dash movement, so they're fast. Um, you know, from a gameplay perspective, uh, you know, we've these really fast running, you know, um, parkour uh, ability with the pilots. Um, and with the Titans, you just don't want to feel like all of a sudden you just got into the heaviest tank in the world and you're just clunking through. Um, so it just, I mean, it just made it more fun. I mean, we play all the time in the studio and, um, you know, the designers spend a lot of time trying to make everything, you know, feel fast and fluid. Uh, so you're never, there's never a dull moment. <laughs>
Yeah, absolutely. I saw some of that before when we they had uh, five mechs on the field all at the same time. It was just absolutely <laughs> hectic. Got to say, also like the melee combat with the the Titans as well. None of this suddenly a knife comes out of somewhere stuff. It's just like I'm holding a gun. Oh, I've got a spare hand. Bang. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just for the right uppercut. I yeah, love it. Did you get to do the one where you rip the guy out and throw him across Did not the get to see that, no. Uh, but uh, no, that one looks really cool. One thing I'm wondering is with the Titans when they drop, uh, is it possible to say aim the Titan to drop in a specific location to sort of like drop it on someone or something like that? Yeah, uh, you can totally drop it on an enemy. It's rare. I mean, it's hard to do because oh, yeah. they move so quickly. Uh, but every once in a while it happens and you just feel like you have pulled off the best thing ever. Uh, so, yes. Fantastic. So, uh, here we've got it on the Xbox One. Are we expecting to see it on any other consoles? Uh, PC, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. Fantastic. With the uh, PC release, will there be Oculus Rift support? Oh, you know, that's really funny. We have Oculus Rift uh, at the studio, and we have been playing around with it. Um, I can't confirm or deny anything right now, um, but it's definitely something we've been looking at. It's really cool. Have you gotten a chance to check it out? Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, we've uh, we've got a couple of Oculus Rifts at the office, and, yeah, we've had to play around with a few of those. We got to play uh, Team Fortress 2 nice. with it, which was kind of freaky. Uh, we've just started messing around with Hawken as well, which is very cool. similar in that sort of a thing. And, yeah, it's just really trippy. It just makes you, f- yeah, yeah oh, it's I fantastic. watching people play because, yeah. you know, they're sitting there and... You know, looking all around and they look ridiculous, but uh, it's really fun and uh, I, I've loved playing with it. Yeah, no, and I, like especially for using in the Titans. My first thought was as soon as I saw the whole UI in there, I just thought Oculus Rift. Yeah, so, the screens coming online. And yeah, that's it. See, I thought of the wall running with it. I was like, wouldn't that be cool to be yeah. like navigating space like that? So we'll see. Speaking of wall running, though, how does that how does that work? Is it is it work a lot like Mirror's Edge in that you just sort of push one button and then it, you're automatically running along the walls, or how does that work? Yeah, it's actually uh, it's really simple. I think if you just uh, you know you pick up the game, you play. Uh, all you have to do is jump into a wall. You start wall running along it. Uh, you, can, you have a double jump, and your double jump resets every time you hit a new wall. So uh, you can really do some crazy things. The level that we're showing, Angel City, you can actually get across the entire level without ever touching the ground. Interesting, interesting. Oh, we've definitely got to have a go at that. So uh, when's Titanfall coming out then? Uh, spring 2014. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs>